I'd like to take you to another world, and I'd like to share a 45-year-old love story with the poor living on less than one dollar a day. I went to a very elitist, snobbish, expensive education in India, and that almost destroyed me. I was all set to be a diplomat, teacher, doctor, all laid out. Then I don't look it, but I was the Indian national squash champion for three years. <laughs> the whole world was laid out for me. Everything was on my feet. Could do nothing wrong. And then I thought out of curiosity, I'd like to go and live in a work, and just see what a village is like. So in 1965, I went to what was called the worst Bihar famine in India, and I saw starvation, death, people dying of hunger for the first time. Changed my life. Came back home, told my mother, I like to live and work in a village. Mother went into a coma. <laughs> what is this? The whole world is laid out for you, the best jobs are laying out for you, and you want to go and work in a village? I mean, is there something wrong with you? I said, no, I've got the best education, it made me think, and I wanted to give something back in my own way. What do you want to do in a village? No job, no money, no security, no prospect. I said, I want to live and dig wells for five years. Dig wells for five years? You went to the most expensive school and college in India and you want to dig wells for five years? She didn't speak to me for, for a very long time <laughs> because she thought I'd let my family down. But then, I was exposed to the most extraordinary knowledge and skills that very poor people have, which is never brought into mainstream, which is never identified, respected, applied on a large scale. And I thought I'd start a barefoot college, college only for the poor. What the poor thought was important would be reflected in the college. Went to this village for the first time. Elders came to me and said, are you running from the police? I said, no. <laughs> you failed in your exam? I said, no. You didn't get a government job? I said, no. What are you doing here? Why are you here? The education system in India makes you look at, look at Paris and Delhi and Zurich. What are you doing in this village? Is there something wrong with you don't, you're not telling us? I said, no, I want to actually start a college only for the poor. What the poor thought was important would be reflected in the college. So then they gave me some very sound and profound advice. They said, please, don't bring anyone with a degree and qualification into your college. So it's the only college in India where if you should have a PhD or a master's, you're disqualified to come. <laughs> you have to be a cop-out or a wash-out or a drop-out <laughs> to come to our college. You have to work with your hands. You have to have a dignity of labor. You have to show that you have a skill that you can offer to the community to this and provide a service to the community. So we started the Barefoot College, and we had redefined professionalism. Who is a professional? A professional is someone who has a combination of competence, confidence, and belief. A water diviner is a professional. A traditional midwife is a professional. A traditional bone setter is a professional. These are professionals all over the world. You'll find them in any inaccessible village around the world. And we thought that these people should come into mainstream and show that the knowledge and skills that they have is universal. It needs to be used, it needs to be applied, it needs to be shown to the world outside that these knowledge and skills are relevant even today. So the college works 
following the lifestyle and work style of Mahatma Gandhi. You eat on the floor, you sleep on the floor, you work on the floor. There are no contracts, no written contracts. You can stay with me for 20 years, go tomorrow. And no one can get more than $100 a month. You come for the money, you don't come to Barefoot College. You come for the work and the challenge, you come to the Barefoot College. That is where we want you to try crazy ideas. Whatever idea you have, come and try. Doesn't matter if you fail. Battered, bruised, you start again. It's the only college where the teacher is the learner and the learner is the teacher. And it's the only college we don't give a certificate. You are certified by the community you serve. You don't need a paper to hang on the wall to show that you are an engineer. So when they said that, they said, well, show us what is possible. What are you doing? This is all mumbo jumbo if you can't show it on the ground. So we built the first Barefoot College in 1986. It was built by 12 barefoot architects who can't read and write. Built on $1.50 a square foot. 150 people lived there, worked there. They got the Aga Khan Award for Architecture in 2002. But then they suspected, they thought there was an architect behind it. I said, yes, they made the blueprints, but the barefoot architects actually constructed the college. We are the only ones who actually returned the award for $50,000 because they didn't believe us and we thought that they were actually casting aspersions on the barefoot architects of Thelonia. I asked a forester, high-powered, paper-qualified expert, I said, what can you build in this place? He had one look at the soil and said, forget it, no way, nothing can work, no, no water, rocky soil. I was in a bit of a spot, and I said, okay, I'll go to the old man in the village and say, what should I grow in this pot? Ah, he looked quietly at me and said, you build this, you build this, you put this, and it'll work. This is what it looks like today. <laughs> Went to the roof, and all the women said, clear out. The men should clear out because we don't want to share this technology with the men. This is waterproofing the roof. <laughs> it is a bit of jaggery, a bit of urine, and a bit of other things I don't know, but it actually doesn't leak. Since 1986, it hasn't leaked. This technology, the women will not share with the men. <laughs> it's the only college which is fully solar electrified. All the power comes from the sun. 45 kilowatts of panels on the roof and everything works out of the sun for the next 25 years. So long as the sun shines, I have no problem with power. But the beauty is that it was installed by a priest, a Hindu priest who's only done eight years of primary schooling. Never been to school, never been to college. He knows more about solar than anyone I know anywhere in the world. <laughs> Guaranteed. Food, if you come to the Barefoot College, is solar cooked. But the people who fabricated that solar cooker are women. Illiterate women who actually fabricate the most sophisticated solar cooker. It's a parabolic Scheffler solar cooker. Unfortunately, they're almost half German. They're so precise. <laughs> You'll never find Indian women so precise. Absolutely to the last 